Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of PBJ on the ETB Network, where we continue to discover the sticky and sweet truth of the gospel. Sticky because we want you to hold on to it, and sweet because it is good for you. Well, as we begin this episode, we want to go out into the field to see what our reporters are doing. And today we're going to go out to Adelaide. Adelaide, tell us where you are and who you're talking to. Thanks, TBJ. I'm here at First Church at 5 a.m. To meet up with an iron group. Boy, it's early. An iron group is a small group of men who meet once a week to sharpen each other. Here comes one now. Hello, Mr. Clausrich. Are you here for an iron group? Yes, I am. I look forward to being a part of this group of men who spear each other on. We study the word together, we pray together, and hold each other accountable so that we can be men that God designed us to be. So as it says in Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another? Yes, that is right. Well, you heard it here first, PBJ. The early bird gets the worm. If you are looking to be sharpened, contact one of the Iron Group leaders today. Back to you, PBJ. Thank you, Adelaide. It's great that you would get up so early in the morning to do this interview. Once again, folks, we have the all-stars amongst reporters. Well, now, let's continue our journey through the Bible. As you know, we've been in the New Testament now for a few weeks, and the whole Old Testament points to the New Testament, but now Jesus is actually here. We're reading about Jesus' ministry on earth. One of the most significant things that he ever did when he was on earth was he gave the Sermon on the Mount, a sermon of which seems to just want to turn us all inside out, to do life completely different than what we kind of like to do it or are inclined to do it. And we're only able to do it through the power of Christ in us, through his Holy Spirit. But today we're going to hone in on some things that are very important, such as telling the truth and dealing with our enemies. And so in order to do this effectively, of course, I always bring a special guest along who is better looking and more smart than I am. And today I've brought a special friend, and his name is Dan the Man. Welcome, Dan. It's good to have you here. Thank you, PBJ. Good to be here. And Dan, you know, I hear you like to fish. I love to fish. And do you catch fish? I love to fish, and sometimes I catch fish. Do you eat fish? I eat fish a lot. Yeah, I love the fish sandwich at McDonald's. Is that the kind of fish you catch? No, I usually don't catch North Atlantic Ocean fish. Oh, okay. Well, you know, we talked in one of these episodes about Jesus calling us to be fishers of men, of which I assume you are, but you are also a fisher of fish. Amen. Well, we're going to pick it up in the Sermon on the Mount here. And, you know, Jesus makes some interesting statements. One of those statements is, he said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. What does that mean? Simply put, PBJ, yes should mean yes, and no should be no. As Christians, we tell the truth. I think I just said most of that. So you're saying we should let our yes be yes and our no be no, but what you said next is probably most important. We're supposed to tell the truth. Absolutely. So if, if we're not letting our yes be yes and our no be no, what would we be doing that wouldn't be right? We would be lying. We'd be lying. And did people also do some oaths and things like that at that time? Oh, yeah. Instead of telling the truth, they'd do secret handshakes or do a special oath to say, I'm telling the truth now. Yeah. You know, obviously, the whole Bible, we find this way back in the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus, places a high, high, high value on telling the truth. And so Jesus promotes that at the highest level as well. Does the devil tell the truth? Not at all. The devil is actually known as the father of what? The father of lies. He loves it when we lie. Absolutely. Big lies? Any lies. 
Little lies. Little lies, big lies, yes. Wow. And so if the devil wants us to lie, what Jesus is saying to honor him, we've got to stop that and tell the truth. Well, after Jesus talks about telling the truth, he also gives some what I would think is pretty radical teaching with regards to enemies. He goes so far as to say if an enemy slaps you in the face, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to turn the other cheek to let him slap that one too. Wow. Are you inclined to do that? That's pretty difficult. But that's what we're supposed that's to do. What, we're supposed what to if do. somebody comes up and wants to take something of yours? Like, say my coat, for instance. Oh, that's an easy one, PBJ. Give him your coat. So you're saying that I should just take off my coat if somebody comes up to me and says, Give me your coat. Yes. Just that simple. And give it to them. Absolutely. Well, what if they ask for something else? Give them your vest. So if somebody comes up and says, I want your vest, I'm going to take your vest, you're saying that I should just give it to them? That's what God tells us. Does the teaching end there? No. Can we stop there? I think we should. I think we should, too. <laughs> I think everybody gets the point. Well, what happens when we do treat our enemies this way, in this radical love towards them, to just give them what they want. What does that teach? God teaches us to love everybody, even our enemies, because we are children of God. And we're supposed to set an example. Absolutely. And then in other places in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, hey, don't store up for yourself treasures here on earth, because after all that coat I was wearing, someday is going to probably go to the thrift store or the garbage. Yep. That vest is going to do the same. So if that could benefit from somebody today, even if they take it in hostile means, perhaps we can communicate the love of God to them. Because action, yes. ultimately, when we're fishers of other people, there's a whole variety of way to catch fish, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. And that could be one of the ways. That's one of the new baits. Well, let's go on and talk about prayer a little bit. You know, Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray in the Sermon on the Mount. But what's interesting, another thing that he says to his disciples is that the Lord already knows what we need before we even ask of it. So why bother praying? God does know our every thought in our hearts and minds, but he wants us to depend on him. He loves us so much, he wants us to come to him freely through prayer. Well, that's well put, Dan the man. You have children, right? Absolutely. I have children. They're all grown up now, yep. but as a father, you kind of knew a lot of the needs of your kids, didn't you? Yes, I did. But wasn't it nice when they asked for things? It definitely was. It feels good as a father to provide for them, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So if we liked it, don't you think God would like it? Much more. I think so. I think Much that's more. a good teaching. So, um, Jesus also, boy, we've talked about some hard things, enemies, telling the truth, praying. He also talks about forgiveness. Do you find it sometimes hard to forgive? It's very difficult to forgive people. Sometimes people are really mean and it's tough to forgive them, isn't it? Oh, yes. Mean, rude. Sometimes people think differently than we do and say things that we don't like, and so sometimes it's hard to forgive them, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. But God says something very strong here in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, if we don't forgive others, what's his response then to us? Then he cannot forgive our sins. That's pretty heavy, isn't it? That is. And so we oftentimes need to look at in our life, are there people out there that we haven't forgiven? You know, is a person supposed to say, I'm sorry, before we forgive them? I think forgiveness is more for us than the person that did the fault to us. So we need to forgive them to clear our heart, to make a way for God to enter it. Whether they say sorry or not. Whether they're sorry or not. Because sometimes people that we need to forgive might not even live around us, right? Correct. Sometimes they might not even be alive anymore. 
But God doesn't want us to hold on to those things, but to let go of those things so that we can receive his blessings. That is true. That is, that is just so great. You know, this is kind of a personal question, Dan the man, but I know you can handle it. But who do you sometimes, you don't have to name names here, but who do you find the, the most difficult to forgive? Well, PBJ, I find it's most difficult to forgive myself. Yourself? There's times when I'm frustrated with certain things or angry at a time, and I will say something or do something, and a nanosecond later, the Holy Spirit taps me on the shoulder, you've sinned. Mm. It just breaks my heart. And so... You need to seek forgiveness from the Lord. Yes, I do. And he promises to do that. Yes, he does. But you need to forgive yourself, too. Absolutely. Because if you hold on to it, it he's, just festers. he's not going to forgive you, is he? Yes. Wow, that's a really good teaching. I told you this guy was smart. and We've learned a lot from him. You know, uh, it's been really great going through part of the Sermon on the Mount with you, Dan the Man. I'd love to sit and talk about fish stories for a little bit longer, but um, we probably don't have time to do that. We'll have to do that at another time. I'll bring pictures. And maybe someday we can go out for a fish sandwich. There you go. With fish from Red Rock Lake. All right. Sounds good. You know, every time we finish one of these episodes, we need to ask some questions like, who is God? And who is Jesus in this story? And... What have I learned about yourself, myself, yourself? Have you learned anything about yourself in this teaching? I've learned I need to keep my heart open to receive God. Yeah. Forgiving our enemies. Forgiving our enemies. Telling the truth. And, uh, of course, at the end of any time we read the Scripture, what is it important for us to do? It's important to pray to God. Pray to God. Because... Praying the scriptures is a very healthy way to remember the scriptures and to ask God to do the changes in our life that the scriptures are asking to be done. So I have a feeling Dan the Man has one more profound thing to say to us before we go today. And Dan the Man, what is it? Read your Bible. You heard it here. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.